Today, we're going to be talking about a really cool topic that's hand tracking. And first of all, um, the first thing that I had to do was uh, to learn a new language, yeah. But yeah, I had to learn uh, Python. Uh, I've never really programmed in Python else than just connecting a simple, you know, temperature sensor to Unity and receiving this uh, uh, temperature information with, with an Arduino connection. So we mapped the, the, the thing and then we never really did nothing with that else than receiving the temperature information and updating it in Unity. But therefore, um, there was something to be done, you know, I had to develop something and I had to learn this no language. Uh, so I need to work with images or a series of images. Then it came out to me that I could use computer vision in order to receive those images. A machine learning algorithm that can actually make me detect the hands. Thankfully, we already have this uh, machine learning algorithm ready because MediaPipe, that's a suite created, created by Google, allows us to, you know, work with multimedia files. This library allows us, you know, to use this machine learning algorithm to detect, in this case, hands in images. And therefore, uh, we then perform this hand tracking system with this library that I told you, and then we simply receive a positional information in relation to the pixels on the screen. Once we've received this information, we simply have to send it through a socket to the desired application, in this case, Unity, at which we're going to update positions in relation to the local position inside the image. Fairly simple, I guess. I don't know how you see it. Here we have a connection with, well, here we have the important, the most important thing. And it's basically the uh, import CB2, the computer vision 2, and the media pipe is MP, basically. We're going to use media pipe with MP, uh, basically. Then we define the variable webcam, so we connect the webcam and we basically allow it to, you know, this show. This is a flag that's basically allowable to, you know, you don't need it if you don't, if you don't want, you know, you don't need it. Uh, here we set the resolution of the camera, basically for real simple, and uh, we create a variable that stops the program if we really want to at some, at any point. Then we check uh, if the webcam is okay, in this case it's open and we receive input. Then I just print that we're receiving input and we pass through the next thing in case we do not receive input, we basically throw the stop uh, boolean and it stops the program from, from running uh, anymore. Then if the thing got a pass and in this case it's 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 good to go, we perform uh, well we start our um, media pipe hand tracking system, we initialize it with, with, with some variables that we actually want to use with how many hands we do want to, to to have. The model complexity in this case is zero. We want to set it to one because the, the number of one, it's, it's, it's way better. It's, it's a better hand tracking. And number of hands, we're probably going to set it to, you know, two hands, that's the most usual thing because you don't want it to be tracking even more than, than two, but you can set it to track way more because that's what I actually did for, for the system I was creating. Um, MP draw, then we basically create the utils that will allow us to draw the joints and all the stuff that, that we need for, for our hand tracking. And here's where everything starts. And this while loop, we basically say that if stop is, is false, because we need to stop a boolean to allow us to exit the program, then we basically start, you know, checking the frames. If we receive every frame, success means that we receive the frame then we basically um, received the, the success. And then we flip the image because it gets flipped and that's bad because we need to flip it, but that's good. Then we check that if, if, if the image has been received, then we can perform our kind of magic inside, you know, this thing. We can absolutely get rid of this because lots of, of, the, lots of times cameras already, you know, uh, do it RGB instead of BGR uh, because it's directly easier to send that. So you don't have to perform this conversion anymore because I checked it and for example, mine is, is, is RGB and that's great. Here it's, it's, it's the loop, it's the loop of hell. And here we, we can actually run into several performance issues uh, that could be resolved if we, if we use threading or something, but in this really easy, easy, simple script they made at the beginning to check how the system worked, um, I was nothing else more than happy to see that I could track hands. 
at this point I simply you know performed uh, the results um, we checked the results inside the, the hand tracking we process the image and here uh, inside of the success and in here we basically check the results in this in this process if there's any result then we will look through the results and then we will look through the landmarkers in each result and we will enumerate the landmarkers that will be always enumerated from the zero and there's an order to, to them so then we can receive each of the markers and point them in a desired location in which they are being assigned in this image so we basically uh, tell them to draw um, to set their position to their landmark position times the width and the height of the of the image and we basically get ourselves a position landmark after that we simply draw the connections with the landmarkers and we check if we pressed or not um, a key to close the program and we basically showcase the image that that's basically the the, the, the hand tracking image fairly simple it's a really simple and easy to work uh, system and let's get into into showcase in a fairly consistent manner if we are you know right here right now um even though it's it's running in the in the cpu and it's not the best way to run it we are running the more complex model uh, so that's why sometimes it needs to, it needs to trigger the palm detection algorithm and that's why it runs slower for that each frames but then if if the if the hand has been tracked then it will simply just track it in performing you know ha llegado justo a tiempo gracias Ri. and yeah everything it's it's feeling way more precise i don't know why she had to say that now but look it even tracks the hands way further because i needed to do something else with that let's get on to with it i basically created the server inside unity and then i created the client in python that would basically connect themselves through a socket. What is a socket, you'll be asking yourself. Basically using a DCP connection in order to get this information through one program to another through this port. And uh, what we are doing in this program is basically we are encoding the information of the position of each landmark and we are sending it to Unity in a string. So then in Unity, once we receive this information, uh, then we um, parse this information, we retrieve it as a vector and we assign this vector to the hand that we want to track. Here's going to be the demonstration about the, the code that I'm talking about. This, uh, this upper uh, pixel is the pixel 000. And this one under here is the pixel, the last pixel of the image. What we need to do basically is use this coordinate system that we have uh, in here um, and pass it into Unity. Once we've passed it, we simply need to check Unity, and if we take a look at what's happening in Unity, it's basically we are updating each um, box's position depending on the hand position that we have it, um, established. And in this case, we're we're simply updating it. In, in in this case, it's not really great, at least not by now. But we can use this thing in order to create a system that you will potentially be seeing now. Um, as a great example, uh, we track this position of the hand and we basically send this information to Unity and then we map these positions into these arrays that we have in here that you can see right here. And, and these are basically the target positions that we will receive. Imagine we can we can use the length, the distance between these two points in order to determine uh, how close is is this hand from the source image, like quite far because the distance between these two points it probably compresses around a few pixels of the image. Whether if I bring it in here, the hand, the distance between this point and this point requires at least uh, a few a few pixels way more pixels than when it was here so we could map the depth at which the image or 
the the hand is depending on depending on the distance of two points. Just something that I wanted to share with you. Hopefully you like it and hopefully I see you next time. This be the video. Do I? Okay. Subscribe to the channel and leave a like if you liked this content. More is coming on the next weeks. Not sure he will actually do it or not, is simply in the script. Trust me, I'm still waiting for my vision update for fuck's sake. And he told me already months ago. Anyway, hopefully see you soon.